This is Selma Schimmel at the Multidisciplinary Cancer Congress 2011 in Stockholm. Professor Abramson, in Europe, what is the standard of care regarding the um, screening for prostate cancer? Well, I met uh, the number one screening expert outside here, Fritz Schroeder, is running the European randomized screening trial, the only one so far in the world, with, um, I think, uh, mature data coming out two years from now. But he presented already in 2009 uh, here in Stockholm, the first outcome, and at the same time published in New England Journal of Medicine that there is a, a benefit in terms of reducing mortality of prostate cancer by close to 30%. So when we have even more mature data in two years from now, um, I think it's going to be very hard for our politicians, even our, uh, us as clinicians, to resist screening for prostate cancer. But until now, there's only one country in the world promoting screening for prostate cancer, and that is the United States of America. So do you have any guidelines in place in any of the European countries or, or not? Oh, yes, we do, because as Secretary General uh, of the European Association of Urology, I am responsible for all our European guidelines, and they are not used only across Europe, but also in Latin uh, America. They are not translated to 42 languages. So even in China and in Brazil, you use, uh, they use, my, uh, my friends and colleagues, uh, the European guidelines, in, including all the drugs uh, we talked about earlier, but also in terms of screening and so forth. At what age is it recommended here to begin PSA uh, testing? Now, we don't recommend the PSA testing in general, certainly not mass screening. Uh, I haven't found any country uh, in Europe actually doing that. So is it digital rectal exam? It is, yeah, but, but on the other hand, when you have a family history of prostate cancer, in other words, your brother or father suffering of a disease, of course, those pay, uh, men out there, we recommend PSA testing uh, to start up uh, all, uh, already at the age of 40. But in general, when it comes to mass screening of all the ma all males um, uh, around uh, Europe, uh, there's no general recommendation. But I'm right now actually on a regular basis uh, uh, traveling to you, Brussels to the European Parliament, okay, and uh, talking to politicians because this is the major challenge for the future because this is the most common cancer in the Western uh, world. So, of course, they are concerned about what's going to happen 10 years round, uh, down the road because one third of the population, uh, half a billion people in Europe, they're going to be diagnosed not with only prostate but cancer in general. So, it's going to be a major challenge in terms of uh, healthcare providers and so forth. Perhaps you could take a moment for to speak to patients and the advocate community that will be benefiting from your work and this uh, video that we're doing with you. What can we do? as patient, as advocates, to help you to facilitate the necessary change and awareness that must happen so we can diagnose these cancers earlier? Well, the organization I represent uh, as Secretary General since 2007, we have a very close relationship, in fact, collaboration with uh, the European Patient Organization in terms of prostate cancer, Europa OMO. So we work together. We have a lobbyist in, in uh, the European Parliament, for instance. We are sending out patient leaflets, and we are on a website together, and so forth. And uh, we have started that three or four years ago, but we are taking off now, I think, and increasing the awareness among the male but also female population about prostate cancer. Since you do not do you know, a routine screening in the same way that's done in the U.S., I would imagine that a viewer who knows they have a family history, a brother, a father, who's had prostate cancer, they really need to be proactive. Is there a message, a teachable moment that you can give us right now for those viewers? I think, for instance, in the Scandinavian countries, there is um, increasing awareness that there is an increased risk of uh, lifetime risk to be diagnosed with prostate cancer if you have a family history. So that, that is common knowledge, actually, in my part of the world. Maybe not uh, in former Eastern European countries, but we are getting there. So I think that information is uh, something we need to bring out to the uh, general population, and that is actually gone ongoing. Uh, so, uh, and once again, I, I think uh, women are more aware of this uh, rather than the male population. It should be the other way around, actually. But when it comes to screening in general, uh, I think we're going to get there in a few years, as we discussed earlier. Uh, but also, uh, we can uh, already experience in, uh, optimistic screening going on. I mean, more and more males are aware that there is something called prostate 
and prostate cancer. So uh, I think I know for sure that there is a sim rather simplistic uh, blood test called PSA. And this may seem like the next question simplistic to you, but I think it's important for the number of men that do not routinely go to the doctor. Are there symptoms that a man might present with that should be a warning sign that they really need to get to a urologist? Well, that's a problem because if you are at an early phase of prostate cancer, you don't have any symptoms whatsoever. Uh, what you're suffering of, of is actually a benign prostatic hyperplasia, in other words, not, uh, where it's not cancer. So uh, it, it means that we have um, a task to really, really educate the male population across Europe. In addition to that, I would say that, I mean, we can cure most of them if uh, they, if they come to the doctor at an early phase by surgery or by radiation uh, or by both. So um, I think uh, in most centers, in Northern and Western Europe at least, we can now cure as a minimum 70% of the male population. Because there is, as I said earlier, also an opportunistic screening going on and increasing awareness as well. It would seem to me imperative that men, just like women go for their routine exam to the gynecologist, that men should be incorporating their exams with the urologist. That's what I address whenever I come to the European Union of the Parliament uh, um, in Brussels, but also here in the Swedish Parliament. That they should, uh, I, all males above 50 at least, should go to the doctor at least once to test their blood pressure, have their PSA taken, and so forth. It's so simple. And I think that's going to happen actually because there's a new generation born in the 40s and 50s now, and they're going to start up on more on a regular basis to go to the doctor. So there is a tremendous change at least in the western part of Europe and uh, the Nordic part of Europe. And in closing, I just have to laugh, as the physician was leaving, as you were coming in to sit with us, you said to him, eventually, you're going to need a urologist. That's absolutely true, because um, the life expectancy in the western community, especially in Sweden, as we surpassed the Japanese population recently, we're going to reach an, an age of 85 to 90 years of age. And certainly in the, in the long term run, we're going to need a urologist. Absolutely. Thank you, Professor Abramson. It was a real pleasure speaking with you. Thank you so much.